na 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 well, actually, it's my journey. It's Can't not your journey. You're just here for the ride. Holy! <laughs> well, I know I'm about to get roasted, so I'm getting all the digs in right now. I have no Take idea what you're talking no about. No one can see you. <laughs> my hair's a mess. I don't know. So, uh, we are now at week six <clears throat> of uh, update six of my compass prep. I really hope that I'm saying that right. Yeah. I counted the weeks on my spreadsheet. I'm assuming it's correct. <clears throat> um, this week's been awesome. Would you agree, Luke? Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been really good. Um, I think you're 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 I so I'm gonna do the compliment sandwich. Okay. So I'm learning about this compliment so, sandwich. Yes, Did you yes, that still also? not still not implementing the compliment sandwich, <laughs> but she's learning about it. Usually it's just you know compliment. Just criticize them. And then criticize and then compliment. No. If you it's more that 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 criticism with very little compliment. <laughs> so, but no, you honestly did a better job with. Um, like limiting your snacking, mm -hmm. not just nibbling at things and then not tracking it or trying to kind of sort of track it later. Like you did a really good job. And we had a little bit of a challenging week because we um, we had some construction done at our home. Still. Where we, yeah, still going. Still. Um, where we went uh, and stayed at a hotel for a couple of days. And you know, you had to, it was a little stressful because I didn't book the room correctly. We're not gonna talk about that. Um, and so, but you did really good. Normally, your, your stress response would be, uh, I have this problem with booking things. Uh, anybody want to be a personal assistant? <laughs> you usually have this stress response where, like, overeating is your thing. Yeah. But you've, you've actually done really, really well over the, I would say, like, the last six months. Like, you, you, if it happens, you kind of stop it before it gets too far. <clears throat> and usually it doesn't happen. So, you've actually done really well. I think the, the thing that I would criticize you, here comes the, the meat. Okay. Uh, of the sandwich is um, you've gotten up a few times and, and eaten during the night. Oh yeah, I'm and that makes it about this. and that makes it really difficult for you the next day. Like I remember I got up and I heard the cereal boxes rustling. <laughs> you know, like if either there's some raccoon that's broken into our house and foraging through the oh, cereal, right, or Holly's hungry. You're like reaching over, patting the bed, and you're like, she's gone. Yeah, she's gone. <laughs> so I like rip the covers off. I'm like, oh god. I gotta stop her! Paula Lane, so this is, what morning was that? Was this Sunday morning? Uh, this would have been, yeah, Sunday morning because we got up really early because yeah. you were hungry yes. and then didn't go back to bed. That's right. <laughs> so Sunday morning, uh, we'd been out on the boat all day on Saturday um, and it was just a long day. So we kind of went to bed pretty early, I think. Uh, no. Remember, we went on and played cards with Keith and Aaron, so we were up till like one. Okay, that's why. All right. So I had a long day. Lots of hours awake, um, so I was feeling really hungry even when we went to bed, but I didn't eat anything. So Sunday morning, I woke up, it would have been like 5 a.m., and my stomach was just like dying. I don't know how to explain it. I was like, just go back to sleep, just go back to sleep. Very difficult. Um, and it just wouldn't stop. So I think I laid there thinking about what work I had to do for the day and blah, blah, blah. I was like, I just can't do this. So I got up, it's like 5.30, and I'm in there like with my chef apron on, and I'm making waffles. <laughs> So early in the morning and Lane comes out and he's like, Bird, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm just eating. I still have my eye covers on. <laughs> so on that particular morning, I think I had about a hundred grams of carbs because I was like, I'm going to make this the most enjoyable meal I had in the last eight days. It's going to be everything I want. So there was like chocolate M&Ms. I had um, enlightened ice cream on my waffles. I used regular like flour. So that's obviously carb dense. Um, so I used up at least 80% of my macros, and, and um, my carbon fat macros, certainly. So and from a physiological perspective, the research shows that, you know, if you do that, you're not, it's not really going to impede fat loss because no. people make a big deal about this. They say, we had this big meal. You're going to store a lot of fat from that. No, absolutely well, that's, not. well, you might store some fat, but the difference is now you've got, if you're talking about the rest of the day, Reserve. you equal out your macros. Yeah. Now you've got a long period where you're not eating that much carbohydrate and fat mm -hmm. so and you're, you're gonna burning a lot of fat. carbohydrate and fat. So it all balances out. But from a practical perspective, what was the problem the rest of the day? Uh, I was starving. <laughs> so thankfully I, I knew I was going to be really busy that day. So I did have that mental conversation with myself kind of when I got up. I was like, what's on? Am I going to be sitting around the house just working, trying to tough this out or what have I, what have I got on? And um, I actually had to do a heap of organizing for uh, Liv's birthday on the weekend, so we were out all day. 
uh, and I just took a couple of drinks with me and my friend Erin came along and we were both kind of having this discussion and yeah, it probably wasn't the best idea, but um, it, it was what it was. Um, well, maybe next time, I think the other thing was, is you, you didn't really choose really uh, voluminous sources for that breakfast either. Like no, I just of, wanted like, it to be fulfilling. You wanted it to be something that yeah. you liked, yeah. but the problem is, is that wasn't real filling. No. And so the rest of the day you, you were- It was very high in protein. But, you, but, 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 but the, the important thing was, is you did have that conversation with yourself. Yes. Previously so I would And previously I would have probably just continued to eat and maybe gone through like a couple of tubs of ice cream. Yeah, so you- so I really worked on, um, uh, a lot of this self-development over the last 12 months I've worked with uh, Dr. Corey Probst um, about this um, and I found it incredibly beneficial and to realize that it's not just... And you're um, referring to the binge eating. Yeah, to binge eating disorder um, and bulimia. Um, this was something that I realized wasn't just nutrition. There were so many other variables that um, were kind of uh, aggravating that. So, um, yeah, it, it hasn't just been something that's resolved itself overnight. A lot of it was to do with me having a really slow metabolism or putting myself in a position that meant that I had to restrict my calories for a long period of time. And I was never really prepared to give myself uh, a good break from uh, from dieting. And it gets to the point, and we've talked about this in, in our fat loss videos, um, where if you are restricting for such a long period of time and then you um, aggressively overeat or binge eat, uh, what can actually happen is uh, this influx of calories puts a stress on the extracellular matrix of your adipose cells and when that actually happens um, you end up getting cell differentiation and you're increasing your fat cell number and typically what we see is that regardless of how many fat cells you actually have at any one particular point in time um, they want to kind of get back to that original size so that now, would be your kind of if you guys have heard of the theory or seen my videos and body fat set point, the, the size of your individual fat cells is going to determine a lot of the uh, hormonal flux, that the, so the fat cells secrete things like leptin and ghrelin, yep. and those can control, um, actually I don't know if they secrete ghrelin, I have to, somebody fact check that for me, um, but they definitely secrete leptin, which is a big regulator of your metabolic rate mm -hmm. and, your, and your hunger. Yes. And um, they're trying to get back to, to, their, that, original. to that original size, mm -hmm. this is what they like like to be at. We would call that like a set point, I guess, yeah. when we talk about it. So the problem becomes if you add additional fat cells um, to get back to that original size, now you will have more overall fat mass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I don't... yeah, bringing that back to the binge eating stuff, like what was happening was I was trying to restrict my calories and I would binge eat and it wouldn't just be one day, it would roll on. Like I would be, I'd feel really guilty. I feel terrible, and then that was a stress. Eating was a stress response for me. So then I would eat again, uh, and then all the while during those you know few days, I'm gaining rapid amounts of weight, and it's very likely that during those periods of time, I was probably increasing my fat cell numbers. So now I have greater potential to store fat. Um, so I don't know if you did that because we don't know how long of overeating that requires. But this so happened I'm not quite sure a bit. I'm not just talking about since I've known you. I'm talking about like the years dating back so, yeah. since I started. Yeah. But some people, the, so to, to elaborate on that, there is some research that says some people are actually res more resistant to that. Mm -hmm. And what would happen too is normally if you'd overeat like that, um, you would then follow it up with restriction. Yes. So like, uh, we, we don't know the exact, how, how much, how long does it take for this to happen? We don't know those the data. No. It could be a few days, it could be a few weeks, we don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I think you probably didn't increase your, your, your fat cell number. Um, Skeptical. But... <laughs> But you refer to yourself to, to yourself as a hippopotamus even last week, so I think your your perception is a little bit skewed. Um, so the, I don't mean that. I <laughs> I say that uh, very very lightheartedly. <laughs> so, anyways, I, I think the the point that we're we're that I'm trying to make is that um, you have done much better. Yes. Like I've seen a, a huge uh, difference, and actually, it's kind of rolling over to other areas of your life because you've been less stressed, um, you seem to be enjoying things more. Mm -hmm. um, the prep has been hard, mm -hmm. like any prep, uh, but you seem to be doing okay. And now guess what? You have a diet break. Yay. So I know you were really worried last week about um, the diet break coming up because you felt like you hadn't lost enough. Yeah. And so what happened? So my weight average last week uh, was 67.7. Um, although it was trending down, so the average didn't quite reflect what my weight was. 
And um, real quick, before we go on, you had said, I can't believe you're not going to drop my calories. You're not going to recommend drop my calories. I would be much more aggressive. Hmm, it's almost like I've done this before. So am I. We can lose sight when you're coaching yourself. Yes, no, but that's why it is important. So anyway, this week uh, I am down 1.2 kilos. So my weight came in at 66.5 uh, as my new average. And I literally have hit that number basically every single week for the every single day for the last um, seven days almost. So. Yeah. Yeah, I am glad that I didn't drop uh, too much lower because it was a very tough week, um, like from a calorie perspective, for what I'm used to. Um, and I think part of the reason I spoke about this last week um, briefly was because I'm used to doing so much more activity, um, so my macros have never really been this low. So yeah, it's kind of mentally like, Ugh, wow, I've got to eat that. Yeah, there's actually there's actually, actually, there's there's actually data less. on that that some people have that exercise is an anorectic effect. Yeah, actually, but, a lot of you guys commented on that video last week because I think I asked, "Does exercise make you hungry?" And it was a pretty good, um, pretty good mix to be honest. Like half of you were saying, "Hell no!" Like I would rather eat way less because when I um, when I exercise, my hunger levels go up. Whereas the other fifty percent of you guys were the complete opposite. So interesting, um, interesting to think about. Um, so yeah, I've lost 1.2 kilos uh, this week. Um, shall we take a look at my compliance and then we'll have a chat about where to from here. Now it's my diet break. We'll probably recalculate my uh, maintenance calories, yeah? Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so looking at my compliance from uh, the week that's just passed. So from Wednesday last week was the 22nd uh, through to the 28th here. Um, you can see my calorie target is 16.23 and my average for the week was 16.20. So uh, within three calories, that's pretty darn good for me considering... Um, yeah, it's wonder what you did exactly. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> so uh, my protein was pretty good. I had one day where I was slightly over um, and that was when we were actually out for dinner at a steakhouse. So it's lucky that I didn't hit like the 200s on oh, that yeah, day. Do you your, remember that day? Your carbs were under and your fats were over. Right. Um, and that's actually incorrect. I put that the wrong way around. Let's see what happens to my number. 53. That one's the wrong way too. Um, I'm actually a little bit low. Getting dyslexic. Yeah, I know. That's because my macro tracker puts the um, carbs second and the fats first. So I'm just reading it across. That was my error. Um, yeah, so my average is actually a little bit lower than what I thought because I had those two numbers around the wrong way. So you just watched me do a boo-boo. Um, mm. Yeah, carbs average 130 for the week. Um, fat average 44. So I'm a little bit down, but I did have some alcohol uh, on Sunday. Um, so yeah, my compliance overall we come across was 97%. Uh, percent. So um, that's pretty good. It's within the 3% range that I usually allow. Um, so nothing kind of major to point out there. My sodium was kind of all over the place this week. Just on a side note, you can see there um, one day it's like up around 5,000 milligrams. Uh, one day it was as low as 760. Uh, so um, this is something that I will have to refine as I get a little bit closer to my um, show day, especially the, le the week leading in. That needs to be a lot more consistent. Um, and my fiber is pretty standard. You can see it's been 2016. We scroll up. Um, I did, wasn't logging it there. Haven't got the average, but you can see it kind of sits around that 20 um, mark, which is pretty normal. Over to um, this week's um, main data spreadsheet, which you guys actually now have this um, available online. So if you go to our website, you can actually download this uh, for yourself to use and you can enter in all your own information, which is really cool. Um, we've recalculated my um, maintenance calories this week. So this is based on my diet break being this week. So I'm probably gonna be hitting around 190 uh, carbohydrates, 49 fats and 165. Um, for my protein, for my diet break. So I'm just gonna put that in there. Actually, no, that's not correct, diet break. Okay, yeah, we, we did, our, we wanna point out that your, your maintenance that we're putting in is a little bit higher than what we calculated via the Mueller equation. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is based on the amount of weight you lost on the calories that you're on the past couple of weeks, um, it would predict that your, your maintenance is actually like closer to 2,000 calories. Yeah. 
So we're kind of splitting the difference a little bit. Mueller had you, I think, at like 1780 mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, so we're about 100 calories higher. So. Yeah. And this gets back to the maintenance range that we've talked about before, where, where there probably is an, a lower limit and an upper limit yep. range to where you'll maintain your body weight. And with a diet break, we're really trying to find, I wouldn't say the very upper end of that range because we'd rather be safe than sorry. Yeah. But we're trying to sit somewhere in the middle. Yeah. So I think if you were at, you know, 1900, 1950 calories, you'd probably still maintain, mm -hmm. but it would be It'd skirting be that average. edge. Yeah. So right now we're about 1880. We're, we're solidly in that middle. And I mean, last time, you know, we went on the diet, you were concerned last night because you're like, well, I feel like I haven't dropped, mm -hmm. even though you had. And uh, you're going to go into a diet break and you're worried you're not going to make progress. Well, now you can look at uh your, your your last time mm -hmm. you actually dropped weight during your diet break yeah so, so um my previous diet break we were up around the i think it was 1980 calories for my predicted maintenance based on my body weight at that time and yeah about four days into that diet break i was really dropping so um that was really positive to see and i think um we also have to remember like when you're um, having these diet breaks um you're eating more calories generally you're probably feeling a little bit more positive your mood's better training may be improved um, and also probably bigger output, like from an en energy expenditure side of things, um, because you're you're eating more. So it's kind of like the way I would think that this is or well, what's actually happening from a metabolic standpoint is that you're um, kind of superseding uh, what you're taking in because of all those kind of positive um, influences um, just by having higher calories. So, some people do. Some people do gain weight in a diet break. Yeah, well, that's some people true. maintain, and some people like I. It is very individual. I'm not going to yeah. say that's going to happen for you if you're trying the same thing, but I think um, that's how I would explain that um for me yeah i have a client who she's like she's been very consistently she'll drop a kilo and a half during her two diet weeks yeah and then she'll gain back a half kilo during her diet yeah and that's pretty normal i say that as well i mean um yeah <laughs> but the, the the and if you start gaining too much during your diet breaks you probably need to drop your down a little bit. bit yeah and that's a really good question so if somebody um uh, i was asked this last week in the video so if somebody is taking a diet break um, and they've got a full seven days on a particular set of macros. You must be tired. <laughs> They're on a, a particular set of macros, but they can see their weight is trending up um, probably more than we would like to see where you're meant to be maintaining your weight. Um, and would you would you bother re reducing somebody's yeah, weight? Yeah, I would. If I saw it, if, I, if it was above a 1% body weight mm -hmm. and it kind of stayed there, mm -hmm. I'd probably drop them a little bit. Yeah. Um, so do you get people to check back in with you midweek? Because I'm not sure how you do your clients. Yes, uh, if they're contest prep, yes. Yeah. Um, and I haven't had to adjust anybody yet because usually I'm, I'm pretty good on, on nailing what the, yeah. what the diet break should be. Yeah. But, um, you know, if that was the case, I would adjust. Mm. Um, now, one thing I want to point out is this diet break is lower calories than your previous diet break. It is. Um, so the reason for that being is that, as we've spoken about, as you're dieting, your mm -hmm. metabolic rate is going to go down one from the weight loss that you incurred mm -hmm. um and two also just because of metabolic adaptation yeah. so we're trying to account for that one of the reasons in the mute and the Matador study did show that they were kind of able to negate that metabolic adaptation mm -hmm. um and the only the only drop in metabolic rate they really got was from weight loss mm -hmm. but they still had to recalculate yeah. Your maintenance every two weeks yeah. because what was your maintenance at the beginning is not going to be your maintenance right. now that you're and that's why it's really like. useful to have all of this data so we kind of knew going into this diet program that um my maintenance um calories were a little bit higher than what's predicted uh, based on my current lean body mass and activity levels and my age all those other things that go into the Mueller equation so um, if you had a lot of data, it kind of gives you the tools to go, well, based on my original calculation for my required calories, you were sitting maybe a little bit higher. For you, it might be that you're sitting a couple of uh, hundred calories below what is predicted, and that would just suggest that your metabolism isn't quite where it needs to be. So yeah, it's, it's great that we can kind of look back on that and um, make that a decision to increase my calories higher than what this would because if we went by what the Mueller says today for me personally I probably, probably would be it would be a little bit too low so yeah I'm, I'm really happy and that's a great way to determine how your metabolism is doing is, is comparing it to some of these equations and saying okay this is what it should be mm. 
where am I at? Am I, am I higher than that maintaining? Am I lower than that maintaining? It's a good yeah. way to try and figure out where your metabolism is at. But I think for this week, it's going to be no changes, yeah. right? No. And um, we're going to do the diet break. We're going to see where you're at by next Tuesday and go from there. I do have something to add about my training. So um, this week uh, was the first week I made a slight uh, adjustment to my training. So nothing is different on the weights front. Uh, so using the workout builder, I still do my five days of uh, programmed weights. Um, but previously my hit cardio was a 45 minute spin class and then everything else was um, low intensity. Um, this week I did one session that was on the stair master or what do you guys call it? The stair master. Oh, yeah. it is. Okay. Um, so I did one session for 20 minutes on the stair master and I can tell you now that is a sight more difficult than just my regular walking. So. Um, I'm not going to be swapping all of my low intensity cardio over to the Stairmaster just yet because I identified immediately how much more difficult that was. Um, so I want to make sure I have uh, those tools uh, available to me later in the prep if I really need to get aggressive. Um, or if I do it now, I don't want to um, have that adaptive response take place now and now that's my, my standard. So um, that is the only thing that I'll be doing differently for my training. Uh, this week is just one of summing out one of my regular, you know, no incline walks to the the stepper. Cool. Yeah. Well, with that, oh, oh, we do have something. Oh, we oh, oh, yeah. A boo boo. The boo boo. Uh, okay. So last week, you guys would have um, probably gone and downloaded the the macro tracker off um, either of our websites. I don't know what's been happening on Lane's website, Card but here. I can say. Card here. <laughs> uh, I don't know whether Lane has had the same um, issue with his, but a lot of you guys have been emailing me or um, commenting on my Instagram that the link isn't working for you. My IT guys have just gotten back to me. Um, the reason why you cannot see the file or it tells you that there is an error with the download is because you need to have access to Excel. So if you're using a device that does not have an Excel program uh, downloaded, um, that is why you can't see it. So you need to be using it from your desktop or your laptop or you need to have that software installed uh, to have access to it because it's Excel. So if you don't have it, you don't get it. Yep. If you've got Excel, there's several programs that will run Excel on the iPhone. So, yes, absolutely. Um, I think it's um, there's sheets. Like numbers and sheets. Numbers, yeah, 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 exactly. So get that, pop in the progress tracker because it's great mm -hmm. and uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Thanks for watching.